Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome, back. welcome back to my channel. So today we have a really, really honored guest. We both have the same uh, master advisor when we were uh, like having a master study at Cornell. And uh, she was applying for PhD this year and got so many offers from top business schools like Harvard Business School, Wharton, and then like Duke or BU and also got many interviews from other schools like NYU, blah, blah. So I really, really, I really feel her story inspiring. So I invited her to be here with me today and share like how she prepared and applied for uh, the PhD. Uh, so first thing first is always introduction. So Joey, uh, tell me about your background, like what is your education background and what, what, what re research were you doing at Cornell and your time? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the warm, welcoming, and opening. Of course. <laughs> intro. You know, it makes myself really humble. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, um, it's a huge pleasure to be part of this podcast. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, my name is Joey. Um, I grew up in Korea and in the States. Um, uh, where should I start? Uh, I did my undergrad in doing a dual degree, such as how Yue did hers in China and U.S. I did mine in Korea and the States in Texas, Houston. Um, after graduating bachelor's, I joined the industry and worked for about three years. Um, Same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's we actually have a pretty similar like background. Yeah, track, yeah. Yeah, and then after um, three years of industry experience, I really wanted to go back to academia. So I applied for a master's program and um, yeah, joined Cornell's um, master's research track uh, where we do just two years of research and take any courses that we wanted to take for 40 yeah. credits. And yeah, after that, um, I knew for certain that I wanted to stay within academia. So yeah, I applied to last year's PhD cycle, and I'm very grateful for um, several offers. But yeah, yeah, that was a bit about me. Um, my research interest um, or experience, um, I would have to say, so like my first research experience ever was in during my junior year of undergrad. Um, so after I worked um, at a Marriott property uh, during the summer like for an internship, um, and at that time, like 2015 and 2016, um, we had this huge event uh, in the hospitality industry where uh, Marriott acquired wow. Starwood. Yeah, and yeah. I got super curious uh, working as like an operations um, finance revenue intern um, that what this M&A would affect like the ADR rate or ref par, but um, seemed like a lot of the revenue managers at the property, um, th that wasn't quite what they were interested in. No. So I brought that topic to one of our finance professors at school, and she suggested that I should apply for like a provost undergrad research scholarship. That's and nice. yeah, and so that was like my first research experience ever um, using that scholarship. I did like little projects and I actually had a lot of fun. So I kind of knew that I wanted to do research uh, for my career path um, and, and stick with like being a researcher, but um, just wanted to like make sure that this is what I really wanted to do. Because, you know, like once we stay in academia, it's really hard to like leave. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. doing research until retirement and even after retirement. Exactly. So, yeah. So that's why I've worked in accounting and finance for a couple of years. And um, at that time, I knew that, like, again, I it kind of just reassured that I wanted to do uh, explore like my own curiosity and work on projects exactly. that I think that are understudied and that are meaningful. And yeah, that's how I joined um, my master's program. And during my master's program, um, I was just interested in learning all these methods. Uh, we <laughs> actually suggested that I should take a lot of hard mathy courses and just get mm -hmm. myself familiar and just challenge and push myself further, exactly. taking, you know, data mining, machine learning and everything. So that's what I did. And it seemed like a lot of people taking those courses as methods were in quant marketing at that time, um, who was around me, uh, including like, like Francis, um, and so I thought that that's was what I what I should study as well. Oh, um, and, <laughs> yeah. However, um, uh, it seemed uh, I actually like, participated in like several like talks, invited talks, and seminars um, in in strategy and management field. And I personally thought that those topics were really interesting. Um, where we we look into how like firms, which strategy that a firm should uh, work on or go with, um, uh, in order to survive. Or yeah, it, it just seemed really. Um, interesting to me. So after working on some couple of projects uh, with a professor in strategy management organization at Cornell, um, I was was for sure for sure that this is what I wanted to do. So actually, even though like my master's thesis and everything was based on quant marketing, um, because of that research experience and the certainty that this is what I wanted to do for my PhD, um, I applied to strategy programs and management and organization programs for my PhD. 
yeah it's really nice um so like to conclude what you have said like really really like focus on what you want like you have a like a goal big goal and everything you have done is just like try to get closer and closer to that goal like from your research in undergrad and then like work experience and then like during your master's you went to a lot of like invited talks to like really immerse into like the whole world and then figure out what you really want to do yeah, yeah that's basically like the same story with me except like I didn't go to that many talks to really figure out like what fields are in like business research so yeah okay let's jump into the second part <laughs> on why do you want a PhD like we all like everyone knows it's gonna be super hard we need to be committed we need to be highly motivated so like even though we know like it's gonna be hard like why do you still want it and what motivates you to apply or like to really want a PhD journey yeah um so I think as I briefly mentioned like earlier um I think I get super motivated trying to explore like my own curiosities yes. and that's like my main interest mm -hmm. and and while doing a PhD or like doing research itself you get to answer questions that you want you to work yeah. on um, which I personally think is different from like working in a consulting firm or just in industry general um, so that I would say is like the main motivation for Same. pursuing research yeah um, yeah <laughs> so next part or like tell us more about your like application strategy like maybe like uh, how many schools have you applied for um uh, and we both know that uh applying for a phd requires like you have nice grades perhaps like nice gre or you have strong research background or you have strong like maybe coding or econ background or like maybe you have strong recommendation letters from uh, top researchers that you have worked with so I also want to know like if you rank all those like metrics like what is your rank so yeah like what is your strategy for application like how do you think like the rank of all those metrics yeah um uh, I, I don't think my strategy is the best or optimized strategy, but it's just my experience and I'd definitely love to share if it could be helpful to anybody out there. Um, so I applied to about 15 schools and I chose the schools by basically two um, constraints, I would say. <laughs> the first one is if there are um, at least two professors who I really want to work with. So. Mm -hmm has worked on several projects that have similar research interest as mine um, if they're very active in research. So there has to be at least two professors who are willing to take um, students and um, train them or work together. Uh, my other is more of like a personal reason. Um, I wanted to live in a place where there is an H Mart, <laughs> like a <laughs> Korean slash Asian grocery store. Uh, yeah, I understand because <laughs> there's nothing in Ithaca, right? No. So And I know like a PhD program or the process itself it's it's like a marathon it's yeah. not like sprinting so um and I definitely need Korean Asian food <laughs> to survive so I, I know yeah there's yeah, a so smart near like UW so like I, I, I visit there all the time to grab yeah, exactly stuff. and UW has amazing professors so I apply to UW as well um and also another like plus would be if there is a direct flight um from Korea to <laughs> exactly wherever the location is yeah um since all my family and friends lives in Korea so that would be a, a huge plus uh, <laughs> uh, to have exactly. a I, I think for everyone who has ever lived in Ithaca like transportation and like grocery stores become like our blessings yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like but like have you ever considered like less snow perhaps <laughs> uh, hmm. I guess that wasn't much of an issue for me no. um because you know, just east. I, I grew up in East Coast, so I've I had a lot of snow days when I went to elementary school, and exactly. um, so yeah, snow snow's fine. Um, but I know some people would consider like the the nice sunny weather with palm trees would be a huge advantage for them, and then yeah, they would prefer to live in the West Coast or like or in Florida, Miami or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, second part, like rank them. Yeah. So I personally. I wouldn't be able to like rank them exactly, but what I personally think is the most important is um, I think there's two factors. And first one is if you really can show and express that you have passion for research um, and I guess trying to prove that passion part, um, that would be the first factor. And then the second part is like if you at least know how to do 
research. to do conduct a research and like somewhat have an idea or have experience of doing research. And I think these two are basically like the the main two factors also like curious about like your recommendation letters how did that help you during yeah. the application um and again this is just my personal um thoughts and opinion if you took a course from a very famous scholar um he or she wouldn't able to really talk about your research skills or like how much of like a personality trait or like um a technical skills using like the coding skills, for instance, they wouldn't be able to describe all of those in their rec letter. Um, so that wouldn't be really helpful. I see. Um, yeah. yeah, but then um, a lot of the professors, whenever like we were doing interviews, um, so the professors from the schools that I applied to, they would know exactly like my personality traits and my like coding skills, like all the technical skills that I have, because that's what the recommenders wrote down on the rec letter. And I was really shocked. So like, they would describe it exactly like, um, that like Professor ABC all wrote down that I'm an extremely fast learner. So That's even though, nice. yeah, yeah that, that was really nice. So then um, everybody already knew that. And I think that's what really mattered um, than getting a rec letter from someone's famous. Um, so yeah, I, that's what I think. Um, and then again, just having that experience that you know what research is, um, is I think it's what's really important. So yeah. Um, going through that process with somebody who's really dedicated to academia, I think that's really helpful um, instead of like whether or not he or she is really famous or has high reputation. Yeah, yeah. I think like uh, our advisor during master wrote me a strong letter, also like my research committee member. So I think that count as well, like as you mentioned, like my passion to research and like second, like I somehow know what research is and like what I have done before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like on this part, do you have anything else that you want to share or like maybe to people that like they also want to like apply for a PhD in management, but they might be like super struggling and like afraid they might get rejected or something like do you have something that you want to share with them or yeah. Yeah. Um, another part that um, um, I I could just personally share is about like my SOP. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, uh, I actually showed it to Francis and Francis told me that uh, my SOP is very like unconventional. So in an SOP, we usually talk about um, like our past experiences and stuff, but I focused mainly on research ideas and topics that I want to work on during PhD. Like unique selling points that I know. Yeah. And uh, within the ideas, I cited the professor's past papers and said how this idea can extend um, the research field um, of what they've been working on. Um, yeah, and that kind of, I think, brought a lot of attention during interviews. So during the interview, most likely all, all the interviews asked about my research topics and interests that I wrote down in the SOP mm -hmm. instead of asking about my past experience. And um, yeah, it all evolved in, like, within about talking about more of what I want to do during PhD um, instead of what I've already done, which I personally really had a lot of fun doing interview as well. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all. Uh, but like, I'm curious that on, do they did they tell you that you're going to do what you wrote in your SOP or like, will there be anything new that maybe they want you to do? Um, mostly they, they were saying like, th this is very interesting and uh, meaningful. They wanted me to elaborate more, like how I'm going to do this, if I'm doing it, what would be a good research question from this topic? Uh -huh. um, where, where are you going to get the data? How yeah. are you going to the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Super um, tough interview questions. Yeah, but um, I don't think they really like, wanted me to do that exactly or um or were kind of planning on me working on that idea but I guess it was a good sense of an idea that I am very passionate again about research and um yeah, at least I have my own interest in what I want to pursue if I get to into pre PhD and actually those are questions that I really want to work so, on so yeah, yeah. yeah I see last part is gonna be fun because I I also shared with you like how what is my drama story during PhD application like I applied for University of like I don't know remember if it's like Miami or Maryland or Michigan because they all start with an M and then I I messed with all like the schools I I, I remember that I wrote University of Michigan is my dream school for University of Maryland I was like so yeah yeah it was so ridiculous like I want to kill myself after I realized <laughs> that so I was curious like do you also have this kind of stupid ridiculous fun story during application 
Yeah, actually, I have a really good, um, like, <laughs> story. juicy story. Juicy. Um, Look yeah, forward. yeah. So, um, after I applied to all the schools and finished applications in December, I came back home to Korea. Um, and then it was a random like Friday night, um, in January, like early January. Um, and of course it's Friday, and I'm back in Korea, so I was spending time with my friends, and I was, yeah. out, uh, and then I saw my phone, and there was three missed calls from. Like it said Cambridge, Massachusetts for the location. And I, I got shook. Yeah. So I copied and pasted the, the number to like in the Google search bar. And it appeared like I think it was like LinkedIn, but it appeared as like Harvard's admissions director's number. I yeah, I was just really shocked that there was How a call. Did you, like, do? Yeah, I called back. back. Yeah, I called back right away. And um she mentioned that there are like five like four professors, four or five professors waiting for you to come into the interview Zoom room. Now? Right now? Yeah, right now. Like, would you be able to... Manage like, that? Yeah, do a Zoom interview. So, so they like, never emailed you before? Yes, I had no emails in my inbox. So I was talking, I told them, like, I, I I didn't get any, like, like advanced notice from you guys. And, and they said, like, oh, we sent you, like, several emails. And I looked into my spam email box, and there were five emails from HBS. Yeah, I was so shocked. Yeah. Like, check and, your spam box. Yeah, and it, it, <laughs> I have to check my spam box. But it's funny because, like, all my spams would come into my inbox. Like, there, there were no emails in my spam box except, like, five inter like email like interview invites from HBS. So I was really, like, shocked. So um, you were late for the interview? No, so I asked them to reschedule. reschedule. They, they didn't reach out to me for the, the next two weeks. Um, I guess it was really hard to find the right time, time for yeah, all yeah. the professors to be at once. Um, so they reached back to me after two weeks. That's nice. And, um, and yeah, and then I had a, a wonderful opportunity to do an interview and it was on my birthday. <gasps> wow. Yeah. So did they say happy birthday to you? <laughs> no, they didn't, <laughs> you know, did, they didn't you, know at first. You but didn't I, tell them. Yeah, the interview went pretty well. Everybody was like, it was so <laughs> at the end of the interview, I told them like, oh, today's actually my birthday. And um, thank mm -hmm. you again for reaching out for the opportunity. And and then, yeah, all the professors said happy birthday. <laughs> it's really, wow, I didn't know that. Like, Yeah, wow. that, happened. that was crazy. So then like, yeah, January went by super quick. Like that's how like January went by. And then I did another like additional interview in like first week of February mm -hmm. with Harvard. And well. then, yeah, and then um the the next week or like after like two weeks i got like an official like Le letter congratulations yeah email yeah from yeah so um yeah so wow i thought you for sure know to check your spam box i had no idea like I, it's funny like even in my spam box like there's nothing nothing like, except yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a very like a juicy story yeah like, yeah but it's, it's really nice of them like to give you a second opportunity Mm -hmm. yeah wow wow like, like if it's like me and if I came back to China I will like never got any message or any phone calls from like U.S. that's the thing so I I canceled and I I like you know canceled all my U.S. phone number I just yeah so I didn't even have my U.S. phone number as well so they were saying that we sent you five emails we called you through your U.S. phone number but it's that there's like the phone number doesn't exist anymore and then like in my application Yes. I like wrote down my Korean phone number just in case, like just in case. And just... yeah, and they reached out to me. I'm very grateful that they did. Yeah, that my Korean that, phone number. That's really, really nice of them. So I think that's all we have for this episode. And um, again, thank you so much for uh like becoming my guest today. And also congratulations again on all your like extremely awesome application results. And I'm not quite sure like which school you're gonna choose from all those offers, but I believe wherever you go, it will be like the the valued asset from that school. And I, I believe that you're you're gonna be a really awesome researcher during PhD. Okay, um wish you all the best and see you later. Thank you. See you.